In today's discussion, we will talk about the immunosuppressants. And in this discussion, we will tell you people about the immunosuppressants term definition. Then we'll talk about the drugs, their examples, and their mechanism of actions. Well, so let's get started from the very first point. That is the definition of the immunosuppressants. Very simple and easy. Immunosuppressants, just look at the name and guess the definition from the name. Immuno, immune uh, system. Suppressant to suppress, to inhibit or to you can say to decrease the action of the immune system okay this is how we define the immunosuppressants so in short immunosuppressants are actually the drugs that are used to inhibit the immune system or to decrease the activity of immune system mainly when we're talking about the immune system uh, in our today's discussion we'll be focusing t cells and in the t cells we'll be focusing cd4 plus cells okay and we do have cd8 plus cells these are actually called as helper t cells and cytotoxic t-cells coming to the point that is actually the drugs first of all i'll tell you about people about the drugs their names then we will move towards the mechanism of action of the drugs so what are the drugs with us calcineurin inhibitors number one uh, class in this we will discuss about the cyclosporin and tacrolimus their uh, mechanism of actions and then we'll talk about the mTOR inhibitors in this we we'll talk about serolimus everolimus then we talk about the anti-metabolites in this we we'll talk about the azathioprine methotrexate mycophenolic acid and here we have another group, alkylating agents. And this we'll talk about the cyclophosphamide, also known as phosphoride mustard, and steroids. After that, we'll talk about the antibody agents like thymoglobulin, antithymocytes, and bacilizumab. We'll talk about all these drugs and their mechanism of actions in this particular portion. So now what is this actually? Here we'll talk about the T cells proliferation or activation in short. How the T cells are actually activated when any antigen enters into the body. So let's get started uh, from this particular point that is actually the antigen. When antigen enters the body, so inside the body, we have certain antigen presenting cells like dendritic cells, macrophages. So what's happening here, antigen as it enters, antigen presenting cells from one of the antigen presenting cells, mainly if you talk about the macrophages, they will take this antigen. After attacking this antigen means as they engulf this antigen, now one of the portions of this antigen will be actually presented to the T cells by means of MHC class 2 proteins. What is happening here? Very simple. Antigen will enter. This macrophage will actually show or present. Now this is the antigen, okay? This will present the antigen to the T cells. Now here is the T cell that will actually then interact with this antigen. Then after that, this will become activated. Now how this process is going to happen? Just concentrate. I'm going to tell you people right now. Well, now this antigen is entering here into the antigen presenting cell. Now this antigen presenting cell by mean of MHC2 will present. So now guess what? This is antigen presenting cell, a cell that is presenting something. What? Antigen. So this is a cell which is presenting antigen. A cell which is presenting antigen, antigen presenting cell. The name is given to this cell because of this uh, process, because which is doing what? It is actually showing, show causing the actually the, the antigen to the uh, another cell, to another cell. Okay. Now in this case, what it is doing is it is presenting the antigen by mean of MH c2 to the t cells got now this what will happen here very simple the very first thing that is going to happen is complex formation between the apc and the t cell this is actually the t cell okay t cell apc and by mean of mhc uh, c2 the antigen will be presented to the t cells now here first of all the complex formation will take place after that there will be the core stimulatory interactions between the apc and T cell. Now, what are the co stimulatory interactions? There are several types of the co stimulatory interactions, but by mean of uh, some other receptors and by mean of some chemicals like interleukin 12 and interferon gamma. Now, by mean of all these, they will interact. How? Like, very simple. So, when this uh, interaction, like in the sense of complex formation and co stimulatory interaction from APC IL 12 will interact with the T cells, from the T cells, interferon gamma will interact with the APC to continue the cascade. That is actually the activation of uh, at the end, this cascade will turn to activation of the T cells. So, now what how this is happening? Very simple. Antigen comes to the antigen presenting cell. Antigen presenting cell will present this antigen to the T cells. T cells, when these T cells interact by means of complex formation or by means of co stimulatory interactions, pathways, mechanisms, after that, their uh, interactions they will uh, give way 
to the downstream signaling you can say in short downstream signaling will take place now this downstream signaling will be like uh, they will uh, stimulate first of all PLC phospholipase C after that they will actually stimulate the PIP2 phosphoinositol bisphosphate that will actually further activate DAG and IP3 and not at all triphosphate now this is responsible to increase the internal calcium intracellular calcium an increase in the intracellular calcium will lead towards the interaction with the columnar now what is happening here calcium is increasing and that is then interacting with the columnar now columnar plus calcium when these interact they will form a complex noun is scale columnar complex that will then interact with the calcineurin how now here this calcineurin is actually a phosphatase enzyme this calcineurin plus scale calamodulin when they are actually interacted this complex will go towards the uh, NFAT nucleic factor of activated T cell okay now this will be D phosphorylated when this is D phosphorylated by means of this complex calcineurin calcalamodulin when this complex D phosphorylates the NFAT that will move towards the interleukin 2 genes these genes will be actually stimulated to synthesize interleukins plus interleukins receptors means according to one textbook in short what is stated here is that these uh, nfat when they are moving towards the interleukin 2 gene stimulation they will stimulate interleukin 2 genes in a sense that they will synthesize uh, interleukins il2 along with that they will do the upregulation of the receptors like IL2 receptors and in some textbooks it is mentioned that this this receptor like uh, IL2 uh, receptors are actually synthesized by the interactive mechanism of the APC when antigen presenting cell is actually interacting with the T cells they are releasing some uh, chemical uh, that they are that are responsible to do the core stimulatory interactions these chemicals IL12 are actually again responsible to do the synthesis of IL2 receptors okay so in short what is happening here this entire cascade is actually providing il2 chemicals these chemicals will come and they will act on the il2 receptors which are present on the same t-cell now this mechanism is called is actually autocrine signaling something is produced by me and that is acting back on me this is called autocrine self acting okay now this is actually self acting mechanism here by autocrine signaling will take place here and that will lead towards the activation of this t-cell now when this t-cell becomes activated this will activate further some more T cells like uh, natural killer cells or uh, helper T cells like that. So this will then go towards doing its action that is immune action in the body will take place. Now what we are doing in certain cases we don't need this immune action like in autoimmune diseases and etc. So what we are doing we are taking the help from these drugs these medications we use these medications to suppress these T cells to suppress the immune system means we are taking the help of immunosuppressant now these immunosuppressants like calcineurin inhibitors now what they are doing like cyclosporin and tetralimus they are actually inhibiting the calcineurin that's why they are called as calcineurin inhibitors now when this calcineurin is inhibited what will happen here very simple complex will not be formed and due to that complex formation which is not going to be formed what will happen at the end there will be no interleukins when there is no interleukin available there is no autocrine signaling when there is no autocrine signaling then there is no any kind of action going to be seen means t cells activation is actually not going to happen so they are actually causing t cell inactivation who calcineurins they are causing uh, inhibitors like cyclosporin and tacrolimus now we have mTOR inhibitors like sirolimus and everolimus now in this pathway we talked about the calcineurin which is actually a phosphatase here we have um, mTOR, mTOR which is actually a kinase enzyme and again if we inhibit calcineurin or kinase like mTOR by means of these drugs uh, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, sirolimus, everolimus what will happen at the end again interleukins are not produced you can say in short the cell proliferation is actually gonna be hot uh, how to say this uh, statement in single words in simple words like means these drugs are actually causing these drugs causing the uh, T cells inactivation T cells will become inactive well then we have anti metabolites like azathioprine methotrexate mycophenolic acid now what they are doing is actually they are interacting with the dna within the dna like purines when they are synthesized so they are actually interacting with the purines so purines won't be synthesized you can see in short dna formation will not take place and again if there is no dna there is no cell so t cells are again inactivated alkylating agents 
like cyclophosphamidin, phosphoryl mustard, another name. This is actually uh, having action in the DNA cross-linking. So it is actually inhibiting the cross-linkage of the DNA. And again, no DNA, no cell. So DNA won't be synthesized because of alkylating agents. Then we have steroids. If steroids have got different type of functions in through the body we have discussed steroids by name of aspirin uh, when we are explaining the mechanism of aspirin so there we have discussed that how steroids or aspirin is actually acting inside the body so you can go through that that lecture in short steroids are actually again uh, they are disturbing the dna and the rna in short in short in short in short then we have antibody agents well regarding steroids we have another video you can watch that one antibody agents like thymoglobulin anti thymocytes and basilzumab now what these are actually doing very simple these receptors like il2 receptor and with these receptors are actually inhibited by these drugs again what will happen no autocrine signaling no t cells activation so at the end what we got from all these drugs we got a simple concept that is decreasing the activity of t cells like cd4 t cells when this activity is decreased what will happen then the immune action will be decreased so that's why these drugs are called as immune suppressants now just Summarizing all these drugs in short, calcineurin inhibitors, uh, they were inhibiting the uh, calcineurin, like uh, cyclosporin, tetralimus, they inhibit the calcineurin, pathway is blocked, T cells are actually, what? They are suppressed. Then we have mTOR inhibitors, again, T cells are suppressed because of uh, uh, this calcineurin. We have, instead of calcineurin, uh, in case of mTOR, we have mTOR here, thereby, and that mTOR is again responsible to cause the interleukin production when we inhibit mTOR by means of these drugs serolimus and everolimus then there won't be no uh, any kind of autocrine signaling you can say cell proliferation will get hot uh, once again speaking in simple words sorry for speaking some uh, tough words during the lecture well so you can say in short cell activity will be decreased again anti-metabolites they are acting in the purine synthesis so they are actually having their mechanism within the uh, cell that is there by in purine when purine is synthesized they do their action during the purine synthesis you can say in short dna synthesis is actually uh, affected by the anti-metabolites alkylating agents steroids and anti-metabolite uh, steroids okay so these are actually responsible for the dna then here we have antibody agents like these that we, we talked about a moment earlier so then they are doing a, what they are actually inhibiting the autocrine signaling they are actually inhibiting the receptors present on the t-cells so when the t-cell receptors are actually inhibited covered then the autocrine signaling is not taking place in short t-cell is not going to be activated so this is the entire pathway cascade drugs hope you got if you have confusion anywhere drop in the comment box and thank you for watching for speaking fast and sorry for that okay well you can slow down the speed of the lecture in the setting of the youtube videos thank you for watching